don't forget to live in the real world. Now there's so much, so much to do in the digital space right now. Like people are getting crazy with crypto and video games are just getting insane. There's this whole metaverse that's happening. Thankfully I'm old enough, like I'm 39 right now. I'm turning 40 in April. Thankfully I'm old enough that I experienced solely the material world for long enough that the, this digital space isn't as attractive to me. Although in certain aspects, I definitely did fall into some rabbit holes that I was trapped in for a very long time and it was very, very difficult for me to get out. This can be very detrimental to a man to spend too much time in that world because in, it's only in the real world that you will be able to create the types of things that are going to allow you to build this castle. If you're spending all your time playing video games, and I'm not trying to demonize video games, like video games are cool. I'm not a huge fan anymore. I was when I was a kid and my parents never really let me uh, interact with video games too much, but I always wanted to, right? And eventually it got to the point where I just sucked at them. So I didn't want to do them because I like winning more than I like video games, right? But if you're spending all your time playing video games, you there's an opportunity cost. All the time that you're spending playing video games, that's time that you are not experiencing the real world. That's time where you are not working on the skills and the attributes that are going to help you to win at life. And now I'm sure there's some ways that you can win at life while playing video games. If you get good enough, I'm sure you can start winning some tournaments. I know that there, that's a thing people do now. You can win these crazy competitions and that can generate income, which will then help you to build your castle. But I would say that's like the, the 1% right? Maybe the 5%. Most people that are playing video games are wasting their time, which wasting your time uh, equates to you wasting your life. We don't have that much time here. And things like video games will stop you from developing all of the other things that you could be developing. When I was a kid, I really loved skateboarding. I like loved skateboarding. Like I would live and die for skateboarding and that could be something else. That could be like, um, that could be basketball. That could be any team sport. That could be any individual sport. When you're actively playing sports, that use your body, you're doing so many things that you cannot do while playing a video game. Like you are not getting any more fit playing a video game. You are not learning to, uh, to risk things playing a video game. And as a man, as you grow into a man, these are things that you really, really need to master. You need to master risk. And we'll make another video on that, on, on risk specifically. You need, to, you need to be able to work with those around you. You need to be able to figure out the headspace that you need to be in in order to win in that sport, be it individual or team. All of that will help you to win at life. You need to be physically fit. You need to be strong as a man. A lot of this stuff also applies to women, also applies to, to female, the female gender. But I don't know near as much about what it's like to be a woman. I'm going to leave that to other women to speak to. I'm here to speak to young men. That's what I feel I have the ability to impact. That's what I feel I know about. So I'm just going to leave things to what I actually know about. And being a young man, you need to be able to build a castle. If you do not build a castle, you will not get access to reproduction, which I'm sure as a teenager, you don't really care about, or like a 20 something, you don't really care about like getting access to reproduction. You don't care about having kids. And we'll, we'll talk about that in another video too. But, you, you do care about getting laid. You do care about being able to get girls, right? Yes, of course you do. So if you want to get girls, girls don't care how, how good you are at video games. They do not care one iota how good you are at video games. 
unless it is generating wealth for you. Women want guys that have resources. That can mean money. That can mean things. That can mean tools that you're able to help them in their life with. If you're not able to build wealth, if you're not able to acquire resources, you will not get girls. If you spend all your time playing video games, you will not get girls. Girls want men that can create stability and security. Remember that, stability and security. Stability in this situation, in this time and place, equates to many things, but the easiest thing to talk about right now is financial stability. And there may be some people that refute that, but I think it's really, really easy to see it just everywhere. And that can be, there's ways that women can get, uh, go down the rabbit hole too far where they're, they're wanting men that are only millionaires or whatever. But overall, I would say women want a man that is able to provide enough stability for them to then go and have kids because women have to have kids. And if you are with a woman and you're, say you're 19, 20, and they're 18, 19, 20, they're not really gonna care too much about your ability to, at least consciously they won't, be worried about your ability to provide security while they have children, while they are pregnant, so they don't need to work in order to raise this kid. They won't consciously be thinking that. They'll more be thinking like, oh, does he have access to, can he get me in a club? Or uh, does he have some money so we can go out and eat? Does he have a car so we can, uh, so he can drive me to school. Those are things that younger women care about. But you'll see, as you grow older, as you start turning 25, 26, 27, especially after 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, okay? If you are in a relationship, and it starts when you're 20, and that relationship continues to mature until the time you are 25, 26, 27, you will realize that your wife, your, that your woman, probably not your wife at that age, but maybe, okay, that your woman is changing, that her values are changing, that she now is starting to worry that you cannot provide for her during childbirth and during those first really impactful years where the where she has is carrying an infant because she is unable to provide for herself during that time that is your job and if you do not have the ability to do your job because you are spending all of your free time playing a video game then she is gonna start looking elsewhere. I guarantee you she is gonna start looking elsewhere. And she's gonna start looking elsewhere for men who are able to provide for her. And I'm, I tell you this because I experienced it. And it wasn't necessarily video games for me, it was fighting, but fighting for me, right? I was a pro MMA fighter for a bunch of years. For me, fighting was not lucrative. It was not a lucrative profession, and it isn't in the beginning. When you're like a star in starving artist phase, okay, you're it's not lucrative. So at first, the girl was totally cool with it. She's like, "Oh, I've got this fighter. He does all this cool stuff, and he has all this potential to earn all this money." But as that potential started to age more and more, after 25, everything changed. I found myself in a position where I needed to either give up fighting or give up the girl because she wanted things that I couldn't provide. Now, because fighting was my passion and my somewhat my purpose in life and I had faith that over time it would produce enough value that I would be able to monetize it, because of that, I chose fighting over that girl and it ended up paying off. 
The girl went off wherever. I kept fighting, kept starving, kept starving, kept starving until eventually I made the UFC and I opened a gym and now I have the ability to create enough income to feed myself, to feed my wife, and to feed our one, almost two children. I'm about to have a kid in like a, a couple days. Like literally, she could pop right now. I could get a call. <laughs> I have to rush back and deliver my baby. So because I was living in the real world and working to build my castle, eventually I was able to create enough resources, enough wealth that I could provide for my woman. Now, if you're not doing that, if you are not actively seeking to build this castle that you and your wife can live in, you're gonna play yourself right out of the gene pool. You're gonna play yourself right out of the ability to actually get a girl. And I know most of you are like, oh, I don't just want one, I want many, right? Like, that's us as men, but we'll talk about that in another video too. That's a whole rabbit hole we can go down. Okay, but this digital space can be very, very dangerous because it is just so easy. It is really, really, really easy. All you have to do is click a button. Okay, you just have to click a button and boom, up pops this fantastic world that you're, you have all these incredible attributes in that you maybe wish you had in real life and you're playing these games, you're playing this crazy hero character that's going to slay this dragon or whatever, whatever the dragon is that kill this boss, right? Which will then give you usually, right? You save the woman and maybe I'm dating myself but that's what most video games were back in the day, right? You look at Mario, you gotta go and you gotta save the princess from this dragon, right? And that's, a, that's an entire archetype right there. That's the man being able to go out into the world and champion his woman in the world, right? To be able to slay the dragon that is life and in doing so, create this castle that then he can bring his princess to and then they have this amazing life together and they can create all these children and the gene pool goes forward and you won't hate yourself after you're 65. Okay, but if you don't, if you don't actually do that in real life and you're only doing that in this digital, digital reality, okay, you're selling yourself short. You're really selling yourself short. And this gets even worse if we talk about probably the most, what's the best word to describe it? The most detrimental element of the digital space, which is digital pornography. This is the most vile and dangerous thing in the entire digital space. There are so many reasons why you need to disconnect yourself from pornography. And we'll make a whole video on that because that's a huge rabbit hole that we need to delve into. But it will ruin you. If you think that you watching other people have sex is good for your life, I'm telling you right now you're wrong. And the more you do it, the lower your chances are of actually finding real women to be with. The lower your chances are of even if you are able to convince one of these beautiful women to be with you, that you won't even be able to get it up when it's time to go. Your brain will become so wired to pornography, jerking off while you're by yourself in your bedroom, checking to make sure nobody catches you, that when there's somebody else there, it's not gonna feel the same. And I'm telling you this because I went through it. Unfortunately, I had the misfortune of stumbling across pornography when I was like 10, right? Me and my friend just found this rolled up porno mag in this chain link fence. And we were like, what's that? And we opened it up and we're like. And that's the first tell of, of, of what this demon is, okay? As soon as, especially if you're a child when you first when you first experience it. As soon as you, your, your very first experience is 
somewhat disgusting to you. I don't know if this is the same for you, but this is what I experienced. I felt ex immediately nauseous. As soon as I saw what was on the pages, I felt gross. I felt like I wanted to throw up. It felt wrong. It felt like I get the same feeling now when I see some like really graphic, really gross, um, like murder scene or something on television. If I see some crazy movie where somebody's just being ripped apart, or this happens as well, when you watch people on their and they're fighting like in the UFC or whatever, and you see somebody just like arm extended and their arm just starts snapping and they're not tapping out, you're just like Bleh. I even saw this on a knockout recently. Those of you that watched that last Josh Emmett fight, man, crazy fight. I forget the guy who was fighting, but he, Josh Emmett knocks this guy out. The guy's convulsing on the ground, and I'm just like, makes you want to throw up. I got that very same feeling the very first time that I ever saw But there's, there's, we're such curious creatures as humans, maybe especially as men, because as men, we're the, the ones that are, are voyaging out. Oh, like if you go back to it, back in history, we're voyaging out away from our little village or encampment and trying to figure out the bigger world that surrounds us. We're trying to hunt here and figure out where the, where, where all of the worst animals are that we want to stay away from, figure out where the best animals are that we want to go towards, figure out if, oh, there's some other woman at another tribe or something like that, that we could increase our gene pool by mating with her. That's what drives us a lot of the time as men. So we're hyper curious, right? So I saw this porno mag and I was, we started looking at it and there's also like this social thing where like men feel like we're supposed to like have access to like all of the women, right? And then if you put us together and you put a naked girl there, we'll be like, oh yeah, this and that, oh yeah, that's cool. We're not like actually like honest with ourselves and honest with those around us, right? Like I wasn't saying to my friend when we saw this, I wasn't like, that makes me want to throw up. Because if I said that, I wouldn't have been a man, right? It's like, oh, you're, you're scared of pussy? What's wrong with you, right? So I acted like, oh, wow, that's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, I want the Meg. And my friend's like, no, I want it. No, I want it. I ended up letting him have it. But we went back to, his, to, to my friend's house that same day and we started digging under his dad's bed and looking at, and we found more Playboys, right? We're all looking at those. And then I was... I didn't have the same kind of feeling. Also, like Playboy and whatever magazine that we found weren't exactly the same, right? Like Playboy is, is pretty mild as far as pornography goes, especially if you're into, if you see the internet we're all dealing with now. Whereas the, the magazine that I had was like pretty hardcore, right? So it was more palatable, but still that feeling that I got was lessened, right? And then now I have this, dr now I had this drive, right? So I went home and what was the first thing I do when I go home? I'm starting to dig through my dad's place and try to find more porn, right? Which unfortunately I found a plethora of and it was extremely hardcore and it gave me that same gross feeling but I still kept looking at it. And then the more I looked, the more excited I got and the less I would feel that feeling. And eventually I stopped feeling that feeling altogether, pretty much no matter what I was looking at, which is part of this. If you get used to that, you become desensitized. So you're used to, especially anybody that's grown up uh, and was born after like the year 2000. If you're watching this video and you are born after the year 2000, you probably started watching internet porn at like something really young, way younger than you should have. When you're like 10, right? If I found internet porn when I was 10, oh my God, it would have been so bad because the rabbit hole that you can go down is just endless. Like my dad had a limited number of magazines that I could find on the internet. There's unlimited and it's just like the, some of the most disgusting stuff that you've ever seen and it's getting worse. We can talk about that another time too, why it's getting worse. But the more you get used to that, the more desensitized you, be, you, you, you get to the natural material world that you actually have to live in, that will have positive things to give you. I'm not saying that you can never watch pornography. I'm not saying that you can never play video games. Okay? I'm just saying that if you want to be an effective man and if you want to be anything that you would consider as a good man, you need to really minimize 
your exposure to these massive, massive sources of dopamine, okay? Because that dopamine response that you feel is going to desensitize you from the regular sources of dopamine that man has been designed to partake in. One of the things that you were designed to get dopamine from is work, hard work that you don't want to do. And that's a huge part that that plays in building that castle. Because in building your castle, you're going to have to do things you don't want to do. That's part of being a man. You're going to have to do things you don't want to do. Really being a human, there's a whole bunch of things that women don't want to do that they have to do. Childbirth, man, that's a real difficult, difficult couple hours or couple days and let alone raising an infant so difficult just listen to a kid cry for five minutes and you'll know how difficult that is especially you got to hear that for hours day after day you're gonna have to do things that you don't want to do and if you're used to getting dopamine with the push of a button or the click of a mouse you're just gonna keep getting it that way and you're not gonna get it the hard way and the hard way is the good way because the hard way will actually give you the life that you dream of. If you keep pressing that button, that's gonna become a nightmare. It may feel like it's the answer to everything in the moment. May feel like it's the thing that dreams are made of in the moment. But once that moment passes, you'll realize is a nightmare. I hope this helped guys. I'm just trying to publicly say some of the things that I feel like I needed to hear when I was young that my dad's never told me. I was blessed enough to have two fathers. No, my dad's not gay. Actually, actually my dad is kind of gay. He's bisexual. At least that's what he told me. But (laughs) my parents divorced and my mom remarried. I feel like both of those fathers with many things failed me. There's some things that they did awesome, but there's a lot of things in which they just modeled very poor decision-making capabilities and values. So I'm hoping that if I can vocalize some of these things publicly, that somebody out there needs to hear it. And if that's you, I love you. Welcome to the channel. If you like, click like. If you want to subscribe, click subscribe. You guys know the drill. Peace out.